Good evening, folks. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, giving you a space weather update on Thursday, October 19th at 10.25 p.m. Mountain Time, 2017. What you're looking at is Comet C2014 Q2 Lovejoy, a.k.a. Comet Lovejoy, which is an electric comet. Notice the plasma tail. Greenish. We're going to be talking about the state of space science, specifically astrophysics, um, because of this Oort cloud idea. Now, an article came out today with Fraser Cain. Where do comets come from? Exploring the Oort cloud. Guys, have you really f looked into the Oort cloud? Because it's absolutely non-existent. This whole thing that we get taught about, there's no evidence that it even exists. The Oort cloud, named after the Dutch astronomer Jean Oort, sometimes called Optic Oort cloud, is a theoretical cloud of predominantly icy planetesimals believed to surround the sun. To as far as somewhere between 50,000 and 200,000 astronomical units, up to 3.2 light years away. It's divided into two regions, the disc-shaped inner Oort cloud, or Hills cloud, and a spherical outer Oort cloud. Both regions lie beyond the heliosphere and in interstellar space. The Kuiper belt and the scattered disc, the other two reservoirs of trans-Neptunian objects, are less than one thousandth as far from the sun as the Oort cloud. So this is all nonsense. What you're reading here is science fiction point blank. This is science fiction. You can come over here and read about the Hills Cloud science fiction as well. This is all science fiction. Because if you start checking the trajectories of these non-icy bodies, because just from the work of, I mean, for God's sakes, 67P has made a stratified rock. There is no ice here. This is uh, sand and uh, other sediments and some boulders. Look at the la look at the layering. This is a piece of a planet, a terrestrial planet, which is a piece of rock, which a comet is made of rock. Now, where do they come from? You guys, if you follow the Thunderbolts project and Mr. Too Tough on YouTube, he does experiments in his garage that proves that these plasma discharge features uh, can cause scouring of the surface of planets. Now, the a whole electric universe theory is that recently in human history, planets in close proximity, including Mars, caused massive thunderbolts of the gods, scouring the surface and creating these massive electrical features on the surface which is why all the so-called craters on all these extraterrestrial bodies are completely circular with completely inner circular craters in the middle. They're completely symmetrical and circular, which is not what you get from an impact feature. It is what you get from a lightning bolt, though. As was proven by Mr. Too Tough and others, this arc here, the plasma arc, forms perfectly circular craters. With the moat, a mound, an areola. So, the electric comet theory does not need an Oort cloud of ice and not nonsense and science fiction. You don't need any of this science fiction. What you have is a universe filled with rocks from planets that blew up because the universe has been around for millions and millions and millions and millions of years. And there's a lot of shit that happened in those millions of years. And I'll tell you what, there's no ice that's been around for billions. That's completely ludicrous. But we do have evidence for electrical discharge between rocky planets in close proximity all over the place. We have physical evidence of what comets are. They're chunks of rock that get ejected into space. In this case... Five square miles of material are ejected into space during this anode cathode super blast. 
Boom. So we could just start to look at some other objects like Sedona, which is another planetesimal. Look at its rotational orbit here, bringing it by the Oort cloud out here. This is Pluto, the purple. This is our solar system. Sedona, or Sedna, I'm sorry, Sedna is a planet or a comet or an asteroid. It's all the same shit. I don't know when they're heads are going to pop out of their buttocks, but we have the data, we have physical data, we have Mr. Two Tufts work, we've landed on a freaking rocky comet that had no ice, we can see plasma discharge features on other planetary bodies that were talked about by the ancients on this planet in reference to the thunderbolts of the gods. Why can't we see the Oort cloud? Hmm. The Oort cloud is a mysterious entity located at the outskirts of the solar system. This, look at this italics, hypothetical region, because it's not real, is probably, probably the source of long period comets. These first two sentences negate the Oort cloud completely using science. The strange thing about these comets is that they have orbits inclined at pretty much any angle. So the Oort cloud must be a perfect sphere. You no, know, it means that the Oort cloud is a nonsense sci uh, science fiction made up concept. Guys, we live in a universe filled with stars that blow up and collapse. They have plenty of rocky planets, gas giants. There's collisions all the time. And there's shit flying around here in space. And sometimes when it gets near a star, it gets pulled in ever so slightly and enters the solar system. Sometimes we call them asteroids. Sometimes we call them comets. And it's funny, we always say that the ones with tails are comets until we started finding planets with tails and asteroids with tails and moons with tails. Who is working in the field of astrophysics that cannot realize that this is electricity and electrical potential and plasma and ion tails? They know it's the truth. I don't know why they're obf obfuscating the truth. It's complete nonsense. So these comets are simply the ones with tails. Electrified rocks that have come from a strange electrical potential from far away or from an event that caused it to have a very unique charge that when it comes in towards our star and our solar system, it reacts. And then if our star has a ma massive output of geomagnetic energy in the form of a coronal mass ejection, it can illuminate these objects by causing massive flux in their region of space, which causes them to glow and go into glow mode. Guys, if you don't know about our Facebook page, Comet C2017 K2 Pan Stars, it's the record-breaking electrical comet near Uranus. <laughs> I love saying that. Near Uranus that um, electrified because our sun sent off a series of X flares in July. Not because it has any ice on it. This is a piece of rock that entered our solar system by accident, and it has the right electrical potential to glow. So what we're going to be seeing for until up to 2022 is an amazing electrical comet, which hopefully we can land on again to prove that it's a rock, because we already know from 67P that comets have no ice. And we also know from Comet Ison that comets get electrified by the sun during coronal mass ejection. We just proved it again with Comet C 2017 K2 Pan stars illuminating at the furthest distance ever seen and observed where it's minus 70 Kelvin and there is no sublimation of anything happening out here. NASA is smoking crack. This is electricity, folks. No sublimation happening here. I'll have links to our Facebook page. Please join us as we uncover the misinformation that NASA is putting out. 
because the overwhelming evidence is that comets are rocks and they're electric rocks because electricity is pervasive throughout our solar system and the universe. It's what creates stars. It's what creates aurora borealis. It's what causes your heart to beat, for gosh sakes. Wake up and smell the science already, you science fiction idiots. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. I could talk on and on about this nonsense. Look into this guy, Fraser Cain. These are science fiction novelists. These are not scientists. We're scientists. We use data, observation, experimentation, analysis. We cross-check. If you want to know more, more about science, subscribe to this channel, share this with like-minded people, and learn something about plasma discharge in our universe. The true nature of the universe is being covered up. This is in the Sahara Desert. This is the same scale as Olympus Mons. These are not craters. This is the sheath of a Birkeland current. And this is the counter-rotating vortices within it. We've, we've observed this on Saturn. We've observed this at every scale. Please Google plasma scaling. It's how plasma geology got started. If you don't know about plasma geology, guys, please, I'll leave you links. Like the page, give us support there. And we'll be following this comet, K2 Pan Stars, coming in. And it's not coming in from the Oort cloud, folks. And you can't see the Oort cloud because it doesn't exist. It's a fantasy, along with the Hills cloud. Be safe, everyone.